So then you have your 45 degree angle set in there on each side. And then all you have to do is when you click it up, you just click this guy up on here. Okay. And then you just, you pull it back and then you just keep getting it even as you go. You don't want to just sit there and try to do it all at once because you're not going to get anything nice and even. So you want to take it and you want to click it up on here like that. And then you kind of, I'm going to exaggerate, but you want to pull it back some. But as you pull it back, you just want to get it even across. When that looks nice and even, like a nice crisp bevel, then you want to pull it back even more. And so let's say we got it even here. Okay, then we would get it even here. But you don't just want to, you don't just take the knife, and you don't just take the knife and just, you know, slap it on there and push on that shit to make it nice and flat. It doesn't work like that. Okay, it doesn't work like that. All right, you're doing it in a controlled fashion. You're trying to hold it, get it clean as you go. Okay, you check. All right, and then do it again. Hold it, clean as you go, and then check. So that's how that works. And then for all the people that complain about, oh, man, you can't grind like that when it's after heat treat. Listen, the idea is that you just you keep it cool with the water. You don't let it get super hot. You're only doing like a pass or two. You know, you're in full control of the speed. You only use fresh abrasives, okay? Fresh abrasives. So just because people suck at it doesn't mean that uh, blanketing that, oh, grinding after heat treat, blah, blah, blah. Like, man. <laughs> There's a lot more involved into it than people fucking realize. Holy shit, I just accidentally made the world's most durable knife. How the fuck? Wow, you know, I was on my way to making something super thin, and on the way, it looks like, oh, whoa, we got something super durable, because guess what, making durable shit is easy as fuck, <laughs> all you do is you just leave it super fucking thick, and it's difficult to break, and it cuts like shit, so just remember, if you want the most durable knife, just make the worst cutting knife ever. And that'll be the most durable knife ever. <laughs> Use your shit better, boys. All right, we got the Venetus 4 Extra done. All right, we got this Venetus 4 Extra at 67 HRC with the rough grinding. See, we got a nice even 20 thou all the way through. So we're ready to go ahead and sharpen it. We can thin it down and finish it out even more. Get out all these big 60 grit scratches. I gotta say, this stuff is very difficult to grind. It takes a lot of fresh belts. Took about three belts so far uh, to get this guy looking like this. But we got a fairly thick stock on here and we got that ground down to just under 20 thou. So ready to put an edge on here and check it out. Mo thin mo better. This side has more of a production geometry. Okay, I did bolt the same. That's the sharpened bevel. That's where the knife is sharpened. This flat side, that's the primary grind. Okay, that's where I, I clicked it up on the belt and ground it. And the division between these two things is the behind the edge thickness. So this opposite side, same angle bevel, much thinner though. That's 12 degrees per side. This is also 12 degrees per side. See that? How could that be the same? Well, the behind the edge thickness on this side has been ground thinner. Once I complete the grind on this side to this side, okay, you guys tracking? then we're probably going to be closer to about five thousandths behind the edge. The spine thickness doesn't change. You see how that's the same? It's the same. That didn't change. We're just taking off the meat off the side of the blade. It's a triangular cross-section. It's a wedge-like cross-section, okay? The more cute you make that, the better it's going to cut. Now, people that want ultimate durability, guess what? That's probably going to be this side for you. But this side is not going to cut as good. It doesn't. It's a trade-off. So, and to be honest, when it comes down to durability, the durability isn't really in fancy steel. That just comes down to geometry. If you want the most durable knife, you just make low alloy, softer heat treat, like 
57, 56 HRC. Just keep it nice and thick. Fuck it, go 40 thousandths behind the edge. You're not cutting anything at that point anyway, so you don't even need any kind of crazy edge. So there's no challenge in that. It stops being a knife at that point. So the only benefit to this side right here is that it basically is like training wheels. It's like an idiot factor on the knife. And so that's why it exists. That's why the stuff like this exists. And hey, guess what? Don't kid yourself. This is cheaper to do. Okay, it takes less of these belts. Look at these. These add up on me. It's a lot of money. Okay, it takes less belts to do stuff like this. It takes less skill. You don't need as much skilled labor. And guess what? It takes less time. Don't kid yourself. Time is money. All right, so it all adds up. This is a lot easier and cheaper to do. All right, I, I'm, I got to have half a mind to probably do it myself, right, to pay my bills. It's not that big of a deal. It's easy. This is what people want anyways, right? But at the same time, people haven't really gotten a chance to experience shit like this. All right? People really haven't gotten a chance because it's, it's, it's expensive to do. It's a pain in the ass to do. Okay? It takes a lot of skill, and it takes a lot more cost and time to do. And it cuts better. Right? If you sharpen your knife, you'll notice that when you have to hit the same angles, but it's a much, much thinner bevel, guess what? It's fucking easier to sharpen. And it's going to wedge less. It's going to cut much better, buddy. All right? And then you're actually seeing what the steel's doing. And then you're seeing what the heat treat's doing. All right? But that doesn't give you the excuse to use it like a dummy. So this side right here is like a bicycle without training wheels. This side over here is like a bicycle with training wheels. So some people need training wheels on their bicycles. But let me tell you, man, you're going to have a lot more fun on your bike when you take those training wheels off. You're going to be more likely to fall down, but hey, get dirty. <laughs> Scrape your elbows up.